how to shorten the lifespan of a product. Case introduction. One of the curse of being a slow-moving consumer good is that if you create a great product, a durable one, the customer will be using it on and on and he will be less likely to buy a new one. So it is in the best interest of each and every producer to be creative and think about shortening lifespan, in other words, the time of the usage of the product by the customer. And this is what we will be talking about in this case study. So imagine that you're working for a ceramic nice producer that wants to change the frequency at which customers are remodeling its houses. So currently in Eastern Europe, where he's most present, his customers are exchanging the ceramic tiles, so remodeling the house every 12 years. In Western Europe, he knows that the standard is rather three to five years, three being Italy and five being Germany and France. So he's now considering ways that will help him get closer to the Western standard. So in other words, to convince customers that he should remodel his bathroom and kitchen, not every 12 years, but maybe every eight years or seven years. Before we move on to more detailed information on how you can do it and the case study in Excel, just a short example why shortening the lifespan makes so much sense. So imagine that you have 100 houses that are being renovated every 10 years. This means that every year on average you would be remodeling, renovating 10 houses. But if you manage to shorten the period between the renovation, so instead of 10 years, you convince the customers to renovate every five years, it means that you have managed to double the market. So instead of renovating 10 houses every year, you are renovating 20 houses every year. And that's why it is so important. In the next lecture, I will discuss the general ways in which you can shorten the lifespan of the product and then we will move on traditionally, as always, to calculating what makes sense in Excel. How to shorten the lifespan of a product? General rules. So in this lecture, I will go briefly through the standard ways in which you can actually achieve the shortening of the lifespan. So the first and most obvious thing is the fat and fashion. So if you convince the people that if you are a modern person, you have to exchange your ceramic ties every five years, they will do it. If you convince them that you have to have the newest smartphone every two years, then they will do it. And this is extremely powerful way to achieve the shortening of the lifespan. Another interesting way is simply to have certain standards required by law. And this is what we see when it comes to cars. So in some countries, you are no longer allowed to, to buy a car or even to keep a car older than a certain age, let's say 10 years, 5 years, 6 years. In this way, you can effectively shorten the lifespan of the usage of the product and convince the customer to come and buy a new one. In many cases, you don't exchange the product not because of the fact that the product is expensive or not expensive, but due to the fact that there are a lot of costs connected with the exchange. So when we're talking about ceramic tiles, they are like from 10 to 20% of the cost of renovation of the bathroom or kitchen. So the cost of the ceramic tile is not that important, but the labor and other costs are extremely important. So if you manage to lower the cost, obviously the whole total cost of changing the product, for example, the ceramic tiles will be much smaller and therefore the customer will be more willing to do that. Sometimes it's not even about the cost, but there are like so much problems connected with the exchange that you simply don't do that. So in the case of ceramic tiles, it's not even the fact that you have to pay money for the exchange, but the fact that you have to find proper people that will do it at a certain level. So if you are able to create additional supply of such people with experience, then obviously the problem will be much smaller and people will be more willing to do it because it will be simply easy to do. You have the same problems with the cars when you have to do the maintenance and in other slow moving consumer goods as well. You can also motivate the, the customer to exchange the product by giving simply uh, some sort of a discount for the old product or for the exchange. Another way which is not obviously liked by the customer is to shorten the technical lifespan of the product to make it less durable. One of the problems Mercedes had in the 80s is that he did two durable products that could last 20 years. So by shortening the lifespan of an engine and other components, he simply forced the customers to change the product more often. If you are having some sort of a headphones, you have probably have noticed that they have the tendency to stop working quite often. So you are forced in a sense to exchange them by the fact that the product you bought already simply doesn't work. Another way to shorten lifespan is simply to create a second market for the exchange product. 
So I will be more willing to buy a new one, provided that I can get rid of the old one. So one way to do it is, as we said, discounts, but another way is simply to create an opportunity for them to sell the product in a simple manner, maybe to some other people who are fine with using an older version of your great product. And finally, you can recycle the exchanged product. In some cases, you keep the product not because you like it, but simply it's difficult to get rid of it because there is some sort of a recycling connected with that. So if you organize this and simplify it for the customer, then his willingness to exchange the product is increasing. So let's move on to the case study of the ceramic ties and try to calculate in Excel. There we will not go through all of the ways in which we can shorten the lifespan. We'll just concentrate on three of them. So the fat and fashion, lowering the costs connected with the exchange and solving the problem connecting with the exchange. So enjoy the calculations in Excel. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Now we'll move on to analyzing how we can shorten the lifespan of the product, which option is better from the fourth we have discussed so far. But before we move on to uh, looking at different options, we will look at the current situation. So open file attached to the lecture, which is called shortening the lifespan version two. And here you will find the table of content. As said, we'll go first to the current situation. So the current situation, we start by looking at the market size. So we have a market size that is estimated on the base of two things. So we have the number of installed ceramic tiles. So this is all the ceramic tiles which are already placed on the walls and floors of uh, houses. We know that this market is growing by 2% and we know that every 12 years people are exchanging the ceramic tiles. This means that on average every year there are exchanging 100 million ceramic tiles and this is obviously for 2020 since we have a growth by 2030 it will be 122 millions. Now, this is just the market size in terms of how many ceramic tiles are being bought. Obviously, our revenues will depend on the number of ceramic tiles we sell. So we sell 10 million and we calculated this by looking at the market size, which we have estimated above and having information on our market share. So we assume that this is 10%. So as our market share is fixed, the only way to grow our sales is either through market growth, which is already put here to be 2%, and obviously shortening the time between the renovations. And this is what we're going to do in the next lectures. So our revenue is the number of ceramic tiles multiplied by the price. Price is 10 US dollars per square meter. So the first year we are having revenues of 100 million and they grow to 122 millions of dollars. The gross margin we calculate in a very simple manner. So we look at the revenues and then we have assumed a gross margin of 40%. And in this way, we get the 40 million the first year and 49 million in 2030. Now, we also have to look at the cost of sales. We assume them to be 15%. So this is everything related with all the logistics costs and also everything we do with our partners, which help us sell the product. So it's 15% on 100, so it means 15 million, and it grows to 80 million by 2030. Net margin is just the difference between the gross margin and the cost of sales. And we have it here in row 28, estimated to be 25 million in 2020 and more than 30 million in 2030. And finally, net margin as a percentage, it's 25%. So this is the current situation and in the next lectures we'll discuss ways in which you can boost sales by shortening the lifespan. We'll look at three methods of fat, simplify and lower costs. So let's have a look at the first way to shorten the lifespan of our product. So this is by creating certain fat fashion that our ceramic ties should be exchanged much faster. So here we cannot work on the just our market share, so we work on the whole market. So we assume that what we do will actually boost the whole market. So the assumption is that the lifespan of our product will change from 12 years to 8. So it means that not every 12 years people will be renovating the houses, but this will be 8 years. And this is due to the fact that we are spending additional money, which are here in row 26, on marketing and uh, saying that this is a good idea. We achieve a shortening of the lifespan, or in other words, the fact that people will be changing the ceramic ties more often, so every eight years, not 12, by putting more money into additional marketing budget, which you can see here. So we estimated that we would add additional 5% of the revenue to cost of sales. So we would promote among the influencers and in the media that it makes sense to change the ceramic ties. So in this way, we get the new net margin, which is estimated here. So our revenue due to the fact that we uh, have shortened from 20 
2021, the period between the renovations is higher, but obviously the cost of sales are also higher as well. So when we look at the net margin and percentages, it is lower, so it's 20%. And now let's have a look at how does it compare with the current situation. So in terms of revenue, we see significant growth of 51 million in 2021 and 60 million in 2030. So in terms of revenue, th this has a positive impact. In terms of obviously cost, it will be higher. So we'll spend 5 million more in 2020, 15 in 2021, and then this will grow up to almost 20 million in 2030. However, despite the increase in cost, we can see that there is increase in net margin as well. So the net margin, apart from the first year where we don't see the effect, will be higher by 5 to 6 million. And return on investment, if you treat this as a, some sort of an investment, is actually around 30%. So the return is 30%. So that's in short, as you can see, we used exactly the same formulas as in the previous current situation. The only change here is that we have grown the market size, which is estimated here due to the fact that we change the keramic ties every eight years. And uh, obviously on the cost side, we have 5% uh, additional money being spent on cost of sales. Now let's see how other forms of achieving the same results perform and which one is better. Let's see what kind of results we can get by lowering the costs of exchanging the ceramic ties. So we've got exactly the same structure as in the previous case, but this time instead of exchanging the ceramic ties every 12 years, we convinced the customers to do it every seven years. And we achieved that by spending again money, but this time we spend it on installing firms, so the firms who are responsible for putting the ceramic tiles, and we spend it on providing them with certain tools to help it, but also teaching them how to do it properly fast. And in this way, we managed to lower the cost of exchanging the ceramic ties for the customers. And and he was so willing to exchange this uh, ceramic ties that despite spending roughly the same amount we did with the fat fashion option, we are actually achieving a better results. So we managed to convince the customer to change his ceramic ties not every eight years, but actually seven years. So as in the previous example, we've got the new revenues, which are much higher. Then we've got the gross margin and the cost of sales obviously are higher because we add 5% on the installing firms. And again, as in the previous example, we compare uh, it with the current situation. So we see increase of revenues of 72 million 2021 up to 87 million 2030. Obviously, we've got the increase of costs due to the fact that we will invest in the installing firms, but the increase in net margin is actually significant. So apart from the first year, it's from 9 million to 11 million and the return of uh, investment is actually 48%. So it's quite nice. So as you can see, we put exactly the same amount of money as we did in the case of the fashion, but actually we achieved a little bit better results. Now let's see what kind of things we can achieve by simplifying the, the whole process of exchanging the ceramic tiles. The last option which we're going to test is simplifying the way the ceramic tiles are changed. And we do it by designing especially the product, which will actually cost us more. So our gross margin is smaller. We assume that this will be 37%. So we did some simplification. It was not as costly as it could have been, but we managed to achieve a change in the behavior of the customers. So they will be changing the ceramic ties every eight years, not 12 years. And again, we will look at the difference in revenue and the net margin. So let's have a look below what's different with the current situation. So we achieved an increase in revenues. So it's 51 million in 2021 and 60 million in 2030. Then obviously we have increase in costs due to the fact that we have a higher cost of production, lower gross margin. So we see increase of 7.6 million in 2021 and more than 9 million in 2030. Then when it comes to the net margin, we see an increase. So apart from the first year, we would get additional net margin of 8 million. And then in 2030, it would be almost 10 million. So the return on investment would be, if we calculate in this way, it would be 107 million. And it suggests that uh, the actually the cost is worth the result. Now let's compare all those three methods and see how they differ and which one is the best one. So let's compare all the ways in which we can shorten the lifespan of the ceramic tiles. And here in a sheet comparison, you will see the summary of all results. Obviously what you pick depends on what kind of criteria you're gonna apply. Is the sales generation, is it the net margin, or maybe return on investment. We have gathered all of them here, so you can have a look at this and pick the right one. So as you can see, the sales generated, the maximum is suggested here. 
we obviously can see that in terms of the revenue the best option is lowering cost of exchange the fat and simplifying the exchange has, gives you roughly the same results now when it comes to the net margin we have it here we also have the net margin increase so the biggest uh, net margin increase is again for the lowering uh, cost of exchange when it comes to return on investment simplifying the exchange is actually the best option and then we also have the percentage uh, net margin as you can see in all of them actually we have a little bit lower net margin because we have to invest in the fact that people have to change their behaviors so we either invest in the installing companies or we invest in marketing one way or the other we spend more money so we're gonna move now to showing you how you can show the results of this analysis in PowerPoint. However, before that, I would like to devote some attention to explain you one more thing, which you might find surprising. So this we're gonna do in the next lecture. Now, I would like to explain you one thing, which I kind of skipped on purpose, not to get into more details, but we have to go back to it. So you know how you should play with the file later on. So in every method, as you might remember, we have this years between renovation parameter. And as you can see, it's miraculously going down. And as you can see, there is some function here that in this case actually takes into consideration the additional marketing budget. And for the other, it takes the other types of costs or changes in the gross margin. And this is based on what we have created in the sheet parameters. We have created there something which is called a reaction path. So for example, for the shortening of the lifespan by creating fashion fat, we defined what will be the time between the renovation, so the lifespan of the product, depending on how much we spend on marketing. So if we spend between 4 and 5%, the lifespan will be 8 years, and this is what we've got. But if we move the spendings to between 5 and 10, then this will be 7 years. And if we go actually above 10, it can be actually 6 years. So in other words, if you play with this parameter here, which is the additional percentage we spend on marketing, the whole calculation will change through the time between the renovation. So if it's seven, we will have now seven years instead of eight we had previously. So this is how we model each and every way. And this sort of data you can get from some sort of uh, small test you carry out on a smaller samples. Uh, so you spend certain amount of money and you see, depending on how much you spend, what is the reaction of the demand, how often they change the ceramic tires on, or other products. And in this way, you can create this reaction path. Obviously here, this is just by assumption, but in most cases, this has to be built in a more sustainable, testable manner. We did exactly the same for shortening the lifespan by lowering the cost of installing and also for solving the problem of installing the ceramic ties, so simplifying the product. So that's in short. Have a look at this. Play with the parameters you will find on the blue, so the additional marketing budget for fat. Then for the simplified, it will be percentage spent on additional things. So in the case of the simplify, it will be different cross margin in row 22. And then lowering cost will be simply how much we spend on installing firms to improve the situation. So that's in short. Have a look at the file, play with it. And now we will move on to the PowerPoint where I will show you how to present the results of this analysis. How to show it in the lifespan of a product solution in PowerPoint. So we did all the calculations in Excel. Now let's have a look how we can present it in PowerPoint. So just as a reminder, you're working for a ceramic tiles producer that wants to change the frequency at which customers are remodeling their houses. So we know that in Eastern Europe, where he has most of the, his customers, they exchange the ceramic ties every 12 years, whereas in Eastern Europe, the standard is much different. So you exchange the ceramic ties every three to five years. And your aim was to find out which ways to get closer to the Western standard are the better. We analyzed three ways to achieve it. And now let's see how we can compare it in PowerPoint. So here we present the total revenues we can gain by shortening the lifespan of a product with different ways. So it's, it's 2020 versus 2030. And we present the total revenue and net margin. So as you can see, if we didn't shorten the lifespan, we would have 1.2 billion of US dollars in terms of revenue. And then we would have much higher if we shorten the lifespan. Obviously, the best solution in terms of revenue is lowering the cost of exchange. It gives us more than $2 billion of revenues. The same goes for the net margin. So when we look at the net margin, the current one would be 300 million. Whereas if we lower the cost of exchange, it would be 403 million. Close to the, this result is simplifying the exchange. 
This means that the main force should be put on the lowering the cost of exchange and to some extent on simplifying the exchange. We can also try to put some money into the fat and fashion. But if we had to just pick one method, that would be lowering the cost of exchange as it seems this is the most efficient way to shorten the lifespan of the product. So that's in short, if you have any questions regarding either the solution or the way you can present it, please let me know by posting a question in the discussion field or emailing me directly in Udemy.